My top 20 movies from the 2000s. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. I wanna do my favorite movies from 2000 to 2010. I have 20 movies on this list and four honorable mentions. I really like to do movies on this channel, but I feel like this is not a movie channel, so the more I do top five, top 10, top 20, whatever, the more interesting it is for you as a viewer and the more interested I am in doing it because it's a bigger list, so let's just jump right into it here. I'm gonna to try to explain these as much as I can, but I know that there's gonna be certain elements to each movie that I'm gonna forget and and maybe if I do a full review on each one, I could kind of go more in depth, but I'm gonna to try to give you just as much as I can without staying on any movie too long. My honorable mentions, I only have four. They are the original Iron Man, and to be honest, the only reason this one wasn't on the list is because I haven't seen it in for so long, but um, this movie came out right when I was in that perfect age of being able to love this movie still in high school, but old enough to really, really appreciate it. I loved Iron Man. I just have to see it again because I haven't seen it probably since it came out. Crank, Crank is kind of like a guilty pleasure. It was hard for me to put this on this list. It's for a certain kind of person. A certain kind of person can appreciate Crank, but it is very over the top and very in your face and not for everybody. Disturbia, I really like Disturbia. I feel like it's really interesting. I like Shia LaBeouf but I just feel like the last half wasn't as good as it could have been because I felt like the first half built great, the last half was okay, the solid movie. And then another one is Requiem for a Dream, which is a super sad movie about drug use that I used to like more, but I've kind of fallen out from loving it just because it's just a, such a sad movie about drug use and it's just sad and leaves you with a ugh, kind of feeling. So those are my four honorable mentions. Let's jump into the top 20. Mission Impossible too. Now, most people really don't like this movie for the Mission Impossibles. It's kind of low on the list. People actually put it last. I remember the media for this and people promoting it and just seeing MI2 everywhere. It looked like the most crazy action movie. It looked like so fun to watch, but very few people have talked about it. I actually watched all the Mission Impossibles about last year and I just absolutely love this movie for the cheesy action movie that it is. There's these kind of like Matrix and Blade kind of movies that came out in the early 2000s where it's very futuristic lots of sci-fi and Mission Impossible 2 is just my favorite early 2000s way over the top action movie I just really really enjoyed it for what it was Mission Impossible 2 number 20 all right number 19 is Running Scared now this is a movie that I like it definitely has its flaws I rewatched it with one of my friends it's definitely not a perfect movie it definitely is over the top very similar to crank but there's just something I really like about this movie it's probably the most gritty intense Paul Walker movie that's ever been made I think he gives probably one of his best performances here even though he kind of slips out of his accent a little bit he just goes like a million miles an hour it's got a really good story um, the only negatives really with it is it's very over the top and then halfway through the story does kind of get a little jumbled the pacing is a tiny bit off but they pull it off by the end with a crazy ending and a nice finale so really like running scared it's probably not one of my favorite movies of all time but as far as my top 20 movies in the 2000s i would say it's number 19. number 18 is super bad and i absolutely love super bad when it came out to me i have like this memory of super bad and it's like etched in this time period of the 2000s very quickly movies outpaced it and it kind of feels just like nostalgic to that specific time i think it was like 2007 but i remember watching this with a lot of friends i remember watching this with my dad and it was just like funny new quirky new age movie that came out and just everybody liked it for me i have it mainly for nostalgia for that perfect time period really like super bad all right, number 17 is Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Now, I actually don't really like too much romance movies, but there's a select few that just really hit it out of the park, and I think that Mr. and Mrs. Smith is one of those. Um, the whole tension of this building to where they finally have that confrontation in the middle of the movie, the tension is just so good. The actors are just top tier, and they actually ended up getting married later on and I just really really enjoy Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I've, it's probably one of my favorite romance style movies or movies that features romance as a main thing. All right number 16 is The Grudge. Now I watched this one somewhat recently. I think I watched it twice. I just really 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 like The Grudge. It's probably going to be in my top 10 uh, horror scary movies of all time still. 
Uh, it's definitely my favorite movie involving like the girls with the black hair, same with like the ring, things like that. I just loved everything about this movie. You had multiple stories kind of converging into one. I like the Japanese setting. I liked how scary um, the final girl is and how everything's built. I liked the whole lure of explaining why things are haunted and the terrible thing that happened back in the day that makes it haunted now. I just really like The Grudge. I've always liked it and it's a definite number 16. Maybe it would be higher up if I saw it like when it first came out, but I really do like The Grudge. Okay, Brick. Now, Brick's a movie that I actually forgot to put on this list and I had to put it in the middle because it definitely deserves to be on this list. And if, again, if I had seen it, you know, a long time ago, it'd probably be higher, but Brick is just an amazing, technically it's a neo-noir mystery style movie. I would just say it's a mystery movie set in high school. And this movie is just super, super engaging. I, you know, put it on and not expecting to really watch a movie at the time. And I just kind of wanted to watch a couple minutes. Maybe I'll get interested. And I I just could not put this movie down. It's not something I'd want to watch and watch and watch over and over. Maybe it is for you, but I just think as a once watch, this movie was absolutely amazing. I did not want to put it down and a fantastic mystery movie, number 15, Brick. Number 14 is my favorite Rob Zombie movie and that is House of a Thousand Corpses. Now, I've seen this movie a few times and every time I see it, I just really like it. I like it way more than Devil's Rejects. It has more of a quirky kind of a vibe in my opinion, versus Devil's Rejects. Devil's Rejects is a little bit more just evil and dark and gritty. I felt like uh, House of a Thousand Corpses had this really kooky family vibe with also having this extreme crazy horror built in. It almost felt like a Rob Zombie song because Rob Zombie, he goes really dark in his songs, but they have this catchy, upbeat vibe to where it's, it doesn't really feel super evil like it does in Devil's Rejects, but I like the way it feels in A Thousand Corpses. Um, just one of my favorite horror movies, probably in my top 10 of all time as well. All right, number 13 is Training Day. And I absolutely love Training Day. Uh, Training Day was set in LA and I was living by LA till like 2002. And we ended up moving real far away and I was talking to one of my buddies and he said that he loved Training Day and he used to live by LA too. So I remember watching it in like 2006, seven, definitely a while since it came out. And I just really, really love going back to that classic LA vibe. You know, this is the LA that I remember because I used to live there during this time. But I have this nostalgic vibe with this movie. Denzel's amazing. Um, it's just got so, so many classic scenes. It's got a great building. The way it feels in the beginning to the way it feels in the end, it has just good pacing, I like everything about this movie. It could possibly be a little bit better probably, but for nostalgia's sake, I really do like Training Day number 13. Number 12 is Transformers, and this is another one that's just super high up for nostalgia. It's not a movie that I'd watch very much at all, probably now, like I wouldn't mind watching every now and again, but it's not something I watch all the time. This is just one of those movies, again, that just hit me in the right time period. You know, I'm growing up. I remember seeing this with my cousins and it's like, when we're all still in high school and we haven't like got to that point where you either have to go out and do something and be busy or you sit, sit at home and be a loser. You're kind of in that stage where everything's great no matter what you do. And I just remember loving this movie. This is pretty much like the Avengers before the Avengers. Like the probably the first all CGI movie that is so good that it probably holds up today. Really like the first one. Obviously all the other ones can, you can just throw them away. But the first one really, really liked it. And it's mainly because they have those memories with it. Just really like this movie. Transformers, number 12. All right, number 11 is The Rundown with The Rock. I really like The Rundown. It's probably my favorite Dwayne Johnson or The Rock movie to this day. Again, uh, probably some nostalgia with it, but I just really like the whole action adventure style of things with this. It has a great progression. Christopher Walken's great in this movie. Sean William Scott's great in this movie. The bartender girl, I forget her name. She was in like Clerks and stuff, but she was good in this movie. Um, I just really like the whole adventure aspect to it. Most of the time they're in the jungle and then there ends up being this like hidden golden thing, some treasure they need to find as well. And it just has a really, really good healthy pace begins. And I've always liked the rundown and it's probably still my favorite 
Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie. Number 10 is No Country for Old Men. And to be honest, guys, my favorite style of movies is very, very serious story-based movies. I've always liked those. That's got to be my number one favorite. And there hasn't been or there wasn't that many really, really good serious story movies that came out between 2000 and 2010. Most of the time, they're movies that I liked, good fun action movies, or they were comedies. That's just how 2010 is. It's kind of weird because once we get to right now, I would say I don't really like almost any of the comedies nowadays. But as far as back then, the best stuff was just fun action movies and comedies. So that's kind of what this list is. But No Country for Old Man is one of those rare ones that it is a really, really good serious story that came out during this time period. I've only seen this movie once or twice, but I just absolutely love the good back and forth of this like redneck Texan guy who's technically Thanos. And then the, oh man, the other villain who just blew everybody away with how dark and crazy he could act. Great serious tension. One of the best. You absolutely have to watch this movie if you like really serious suspense movies. All right, number nine. I can't believe this one went so high, but there's a little bit of nostalgia. Step Brothers. Now, Step Brothers is something to where I really liked Will Ferrell from Anchorman. You're going to see that higher up on this list, but I really liked Will Ferrell in Anchorman. And I remember when I somehow got a Step Brothers poster and I had a poster of Step Brothers on my wall before I even saw the movie, you know, years later. And then when I saw the movie, it it is really funny. It is really good. It does have a good story. It's not my favorite of all time was with Will Ferrell, but I really, really like it. What put this over the top for me is seeing other people quote the movie or going around friends and it's just like this is like their movie to watch like the funniest movie that they could come out with and people quoted it all the way up to like 2014 2015 2016 i was here at Step Brothers quotes i all the time quoting the catalina wine mixer and all this stuff for to me it's just a, a really really funny movie that i appreciate that kind of reminds me of all the other people that like it too. Kind of a weird reason to, to put this movie where it is, but I do think it is really, really funny. And I gotta go with number nine as Step Brothers. Number eight, another comedy here is Harold and Kumar. Now, I just loved, loved, loved this movie. I don't really know why it is, but this movie is just so, so funny. It's got such a simple premise and some of the jokes they go in with this movie are just comically funny and way out there and you just couldn't have done it any funnier than they do in this movie. There's so many good spots, so many random little spots on their journey that are just so funny. There is a little bit of gross, nasty kind of laughs in this movie, very little, but that's really the only thing I would hold back on it. And I just like the story and the comedy element. I like how they are at the end of the movie. The whole conclusion was great. And the whole time it was just out, just out of this world and so funny. I love Harold and Kumar, number eight. All right, number seven, the last on my little comedy spree, Anchorman. Now, Anchorman is probably my favorite Will Ferrell movie, hands down. I just absolutely love this one. It probably would have been even a little better if they hadn't made a number two because number two is good but it was nowhere near as legendary and as good as Anchorman. I remember just watching this movie to nauseam. I remember calling my friend and leaving him voicemails of like parts of the movie just because it was so funny, just constantly quoting it. Around the time of Anchorman, he filmed a few other jokes as Ron Burgundy and I would watch those. They're just so funny. These guys trying to act all tough and, and manly, but just failing all the time. It's so, so funny and definitely my favorite Will Ferrell movie. You had the cameos from Vince Vaughn, Ben Stiller. I mean, it's just, it's a great movie in my opinion. Number seven, Anchorman. All right guys, number six. I'm surprised this one is as high as it is, but it is. I'm gonna have to go with Holes. I think it's from like 2003. Now this is a kid's movie, but this is a great, great story of redemption. I told you guys my favorite kind of stories are, or my favorite kind of movies have a really, really good, serious story. I like comedies, but story, like a great story beginning to end, it's like what I like. And Holes is pretty close to that. I saw this when it first came out. I watched Shia LaBeouf since he was in like Even Stevens. So there was a while before he had any like legal troubles and things like that. He was just on upswing. 
And this movie, like I said, it's a great movie from beginning to end about redemption. And I think if you're of any age, you're gonna appreciate this movie. It's it's just a great movie overall. Can't recommend this one enough. Holes, one of my favorite redemption stories probably of all time. Number five, I'm gonna have to go with The Hangover. Now, just the original one, none, not number two, not number three. And I think number two and number three kind of buried this franchise. But in a way, I kind of like it because I like the original Hangover. So it kind of like makes people forget about the movies completely when that first one was a gem. But I remember specifically, I think it was like my last day of high school and like leaving and going to watch this movie. And it was just this like, perfect time period like because things eventually like a few months later got pretty rough but at that time period it was like just this like everything was perfect and this movie was just so funny i love the whole idea of like putting the pieces together or you kind of have an idea what's going on but you're kind of undoing the mystery aspect to it everything about this movie i just really enjoy for a bunch of people who get drunk to have a crazy night and have to go rediscover all the stuff that they did in the day you know, this movie is just almost perfect, in my opinion, for what it's trying to do, for being a hangover movie. So much funny stuff here. Absolutely love it. Hangover number five. All right, guys, number four is The Fast and the Furious. Now, it's not really because the movie is so great. I really do like this movie. It spawned so many other movies, but this one really is the nostalgia factor for me. I don't remember when I first saw Fast and the Furious, but I remember it coming out and then I saw it on TV. And the second that I saw the first drag race where everyone's setting up their cars and the guy's like playing PlayStation in his car, I was like hooked on I'm getting one of these cars. And I was on that for like a couple of years, you know, and my cousin is really into cars too. He's really into super bikes. So this was kind of like our connection piece. We loved the movies, we'd always quote them. And the first one was definitely the best. For a long time, it was just the three movies before, you know, Fast Four, Fast Five and all that. So for me, I have this nostalgia factor of absolutely loving this movie for more mainly for the nostalgia more than it's a good movie, although it's a solid movie. I just had this great nostalgia, you know, this connection with my cousin, loved everything about it. And then as you can imagine, my mind was absolutely blown once they did Fast Five because Fast Five is like probably a better movie than The Fast and the Furious, but The Fast and the Furious has so much personal ties to me and I just really, really appreciate this. Number four, Fast and the Furious. All right guys, number three, a movie that I actually saw recently and that is The Count of Monte Cristo. Now again, my favorite movies are movies with a great story from beginning to end and that's what this movie is. I absolutely love this movie. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I feel like because this is such an old story, what I'm expecting to happen really doesn't happen. It doesn't go the typical way of, if you were to set half this movie up to Hollywood and say, hey, finish it. They'd finish it in a really weird way. It would be nowhere near as good as this. Um, this is just a great story of redemption. A uh, guy basically gets screwed and he gets sent to jail and he's basically sent there for life. And there he learns a lot of life lessons and slowly tries to escape. And by the end, he's this count, which is almost like almost like a king, but it's like a leader of an area. So it's this great redemption from getting screwed over to being this super boss kind of a guy. Really, really, really like this movie. And it also has some pretty tense romance scenes. And again, I really am not a romance guy. There's so few actually hit for me, but I actually liked it in this movie. Number three, The Count of Monte Cristo. All right, guys, number two is 300. Now, I just absolutely love 300. Uh, actually, to be honest, it's hard for me to even to label all these to put them in order. I could say maybe the top 10, you could just jumble them around. But 300, I just absolutely love this movie. I remember when it came out. I mean, it was like the action movie, the aggressive action movie to watch for several, several years. You know, all the quotes. I remember, you know, sneaking off to see it and everybody talking about it at school and like the the slow-mo scenes just being so over the top and so intense and so just perfect. Like we hadn't seen slow-mo or these kind of action scenes really done before. Such an aggressive, overkill, overly masculine style movie. I just really appreciate it because those are kind of uh, rare nowadays. If you haven't seen it, it's like 300 guys going against the whole army of people, but these 300 guys are like just amazingly crazy and like the most crazy guys, you'd never want to fight them. So it's a nice little movie. So 300 number two, 
an absolute classic for me. Again, guys, it was super hard for me to rate these, you know, based on different days, they probably would move around, but my number one is probably Wedding Crashers. Now, I just absolutely love Wedding Crashers. It's a little bit more complete, in my opinion, than Anchorman. I love Anchorman. I would say maybe, maybe comedy-wise, I might pick Anchorman a hair. It's really hard, but how perfect Wedding Crashers is, it's probably my favorite Owen Wilson movie. It's my favorite Vince Vaughn movie. And then it also has like a really nice progression to it. It moved perfectly, you know. You get introduced to these two guys, you know, they're, they're fast talkers, and then they, they do this whole like, montage about 20 minutes about how they you know do all these wedding crashings and then they seem kind of unfulfilled because they're getting older they go after this really big wedding and owen wilson really likes one of the girls but he can't close her right away so they do what they shouldn't do and go on like a extended vacation or something with that family and like their whole code is just getting in and out so this movie is just it's fantastic from the story beginning to end to the laughs like i said it's my favorite owen wilson movie it's my favorite vince vaughn movie and it's probably not even close i love these way more than old school old school's movie i appreciate but just in my opinion does not touch wedding crashers probably my number one from the 2000 to 2010 but anyways guys let me know if i missed any out down below these are all the ones that i think are ownable and there's so many movies that i respect that i liked from this time period but these are the ones that for some reason push me over the edge and i think are ownable and these are my absolute favorites so let me know what your favorites are down below I'll be very interested to see especially if i haven't seen one because i would love to see if i missed something or i could actually knock one off this list because the movie you suggested was so good so anyways guys we're on the road to 50 000 subscribers and i couldn't do it without any of you guys help you guys are the best i'm having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace